Boston, June 16th. In the months since Lexington and Concord, rebel militia in the hills around Boston have laid siege to the city, trapping the British and their loyalists inside. Now the British command is planning to break the rebel stranglehold with an overwhelming offensive up Bunker Hill to take the high ground around Boston. But the colonials are a step ahead of the British. Spies have slipped the British plans to the rebels. Up in the hills, regimental commanders from Connecticut and Massachusetts lead their men to fortify Bunker Hill, then decide to move one hill closer to Boston on Breed's Hill. There, they dig in for a British attack. Midnight, June 17th, 1,200 militiamen race the clock to beat the sunrise before it reveals their position to the British below. They must control the high ground before the enemy makes its own move. At daybreak, the sleeping British ships in Boston Harbor spot the militia positions and sound the alarm. All of Boston awakens with a start. The Patriots have beaten the British to the punch. The first full battle of the Revolution is joined. As the Redcoats assemble for battle, ships in the harbor try to pin down the militia with cannon fire. Under the command of General William Howe, lines of British soldiers, their bayonets at the ready, climb the hill without any cover. Easy targets for a man and musket that can shoot straight. The British are convinced that they can form up in line, and despite taking casualties, instill in the Patriots fear of a professional, disciplined force of regulars and demonstrate to the Americans that this is madness trying to oppose this army. Twice Howe's men charge up Breed's Hill. Twice they are repelled by the militia. From roofs and hilltops, civilians come out to witness the bloodshed. It is war as spectator sport, but many fear for their loved ones in the fight. The rebel barrage goes on for three hours until they run out of ammunition. Despite their advantage, the rebels have no choice but to retreat. The British finally capture the hill on their third charge. But the ground is strewn with red-coated bodies. The new commander now realizes what no one in faraway England could possibly understand. This is not a rebellion. This is war. When I look to the consequences of it, in the loss of so many brave officers, I do it with horror. The success is too dearly bought. British General William Howe. The British pay a horrendous price for their victory at Breed's Hill, which erroneously but permanently becomes known as the Battle of Bunker Hill, after the original target. 1,000 of the 2,300 British soldiers, nearly half, are dead or wounded. The Americans lose 271 men out of 1,600. In defeat, the colonists have won, a paradox that over the next six years will come to characterize the Americans' bloody war for independence. Bunker Hill was a defeat, of course, for these colonists. But they inflicted such heavy losses on the British that it makes them a little cocky. That was the best trained, most professional army on earth. And look at the damage we did to them. It really gives them way too much confidence. In the days following the Battle of Bunker Hill, even as Congress begins to provide for a Continental Army, the delegates make one last attempt at reconciliation with Britain. They send the king what they call the Olive Branch Petition, respectfully requesting that he grant the North American colonies autonomy within the British Empire. 
Like all communication that crosses the Atlantic, it will take months for an answer. And General George Washington can't afford to wait to build his army. He alone holds the keys to liberty or to death.